So the question is, uh, there's a private company that still requires elevation certificates and the flood zone. And, we, and the question is, is that going to change? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that um, later on today in the private side, but that's going to be the difference too, is that you know, what we're going to talk about is, sure, all these changes with NFIP, but how does that impact the private market? You know, what, is, what is the private market's response to all these changes by NFIP? And I talk about it's the private company, and we're going to talk about like TPA. So traditionally on private claims, they don't generally handle them in-house. They handle them with a third-party administrator. And so I think I've got in the private side, we're going to talk about the importance of the third-party administrator, like companies that are changing, like the claims experience, like these that we've been working with are an old TPA because the company decided to change TPAs, and it's been a terrible experience just getting responses from the adjuster and all this. So far with them, they have not said anything about those changes, but I know exactly what you're talking about. If it's post-firm, and I haven't really, I didn't get into that in 2.0. All right, so pre-firm structures built before the first flood map, or 1981. Post firm is after that. So the situation she's talking about is a post firm property, correct? Yes. So traditionally with the National Flood Insurance Program, elevation certificates were not required on a pre firm structure because they were grandfathered in. Post firm, you had to have it. So generally it's 1981 or when the first map came out. Now in Texas, we have an area where the first map came out in 15 and the house was built in 16. So the house was uh, post firm. But we have areas that are getting new maps that have never had a flood map still today that could be considered a pre firm all the way to last year. So that's, that's the difference between pre-firm and post-firm. Um, it's not as big of an issue in 2.0 as it was with legacy, um, but I mean, it was huge. Like you had subsidized rates on pre-firm structures. We have some time and I'll kind of tell you the difference on this too, that we're experiencing in St. Louis with this customer right now is pre-firm and post-firm. So you do an addition to a property or let's just say property substantially damaged by flood. Substantially damaged is 50% of market value or more. It goes from, let's just say that that property was built in 1950. It goes to 2022 now with the addition or 50% more market value. Value. So like this customer we're helping, the city's trying to take all his buildings away because they want him to fill the basements in eight feet with cement, relocate 44 heater, water heaters, 44 furnaces, and he still has to raise the property three feet. Now this is where increased cost of compliance comes into play on a national flood insurance program policy is it pays for up to $30,000 of that as long as you have it maxed out to 250000 um, But that's the big difference between pre-firm and post-firm is when you have these big claims or you have an investor who decides to go and attach a garage to a property or like my office manager who's redoing a house and they added 3,000 square feet and add an addition. When as soon as you do that, it goes from the original year built to the current year when it's being done. So it's important to like educate your investors, hey, when you do this, it could have an impact on flood insurance rates. Or you could be getting hit with a compliance issue because you just added the addition. And by adding the addition now, you have to follow different floodplain management guidelines. We have an investor in Arizona right now that's having that problem. He's like, I wish I would have known this. Well, no, he didn't speak to anybody when he started doing additions. And now he can't even sell the property because he can't get a permit because they keep putting liens on it until he raises the house five feet.